Chapter 9 The Mogul Kate Batello's fingers dug deep into Leo Laporte's arm as she yanked him to a halt in a parking lot in Las Vegas. In the distance stood a massive crowd around a canopy covering a table and chairs. There are people here, Kate said. What? said Leo. They had arrived straight from McCarran Airport and stepped out of their rental car into the searing Nevada heat. The mob was already waiting for them. They were the unexpected stars of a foolhardy experiment, a 24-hour cable channel called ZDTV, launched in the midst of the dot-com boom and dedicated exclusively to broadcasting about technology. At 42, Leo had been a radio star for years, known for his call-in shows that helped people with their computers. Networks like MSNBC balked at putting him on television because of the way he looked, less like a TV star and more like a high school drama teacher. Kate was a quirky 27-year-old who had been working on the channel's IT department only a few months earlier. One afternoon, when she thought everyone had left the building, Leo saw her dancing and singing a rip-roaring Judy Garland number while she repaired a laser printer. They shared an awkward laugh, and soon after, Leo asked her to be his co-host. The channel went along with it because they gave Leo a one-hour call-in show to fill airtime. ZDTV was loaded with traditional television talent and had many highly produced shows in its lineup. Leo's was low budget and low priority. But a funny thing happened when the channel launched on May 11, 1998. The screensavers became ZDTV's runaway hit, and Leo and Kate became its biggest stars. Still, no one suspected just how big they were until that scorcher of a day in Las Vegas in the summer of 1998. Kate and Leo were there to help the local cable company promote ZDTV, hand out tchotchkes, sign a few autographs, and hopefully meet some viewers. As they pulled up and saw the crowd hanging out in the parking lot in front of the Best Buy, Kate wondered to herself, Wow, what's going on at this store? When they started walking towards the front, it suddenly hit Kate and Leo that all of the people were waiting to see them. I was horrified, said Kate. I was just holding on to him for dear life. Leo said, Okay, Kate, let's go. Kate cracked clever jokes and made everyone feel welcome. Leo laughed his infectious laugh and asked people about themselves. The two were even more charming in person than they were on screen. The crowd loved them. The event was originally supposed to be a table at the county fair kind of deal, with store customers wandering by to pick up flyers and free ZDTV paraphernalia. The week before, Kate and Leo mentioned on air that they would be in Las Vegas and invited viewers to come out and see them. Kate kept saying things like, We will be so happy to see all four of you that show up, and I'll be thrilled to meet both of you. When hundreds of people lined up to see them on Saturday, no one knew what to think, except for the ZDTV marketing team. They turned the gig into a road show. They booked weekend events across the country, from Kentucky to Missouri, Michigan to South Carolina. The crowds continued to build until there were thousands of people waiting in line for hours to spend a few minutes with the world's newest geek celebrities. At one stop, a security guard told Leo that the week before there had been a famous football player signing autographs. You've got a bigger crowd than him, the guard said. At another, a family of five showed up all wearing glasses to match Kate's and recited in unison, Amaze Yourself, the ZDTV slogan. When they finally had an event in the Bay Area at a mall in Santa Clara, Leo drove down from his home north of San Francisco and brought his eight-year-old daughter, Abby. They parked across the street from the mall and were supposed to ride a couple hundred feet in a limousine to make a grand entrance. But before Leo and Abby could get in the limo, a 13-year-old spotted Leo and started crying. 
Leo asked his mom if he was okay, and she said, he's a big fan. She explained that they didn't get ZDTV at home, so every day after school, he went to The Good Guys, an appliance and electronics store nearby, and would watch the show there. At first, the workers shooed him out, but eventually they set up an armchair in front of one of the big screens and turned it to ZDTV. And every weekday after school, he went to watch the screensavers at 4 p.m. Pacific. Leo asked the kid and his mom if they wanted to ride with them in the limo to the ZDTV event. They all hopped in and made their big entrance. Abby sat at the table with Kate and Leo, and a few fans asked for her autograph. After, she asked her dad, So, I don't understand. Why are people waiting in line for you to sign your picture? Leo explained, It wasn't really about the picture or the autograph. It was an excuse to meet and talk. We weren't Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, he said. We were almost like friends to them, like somebody who shared their enthusiasm. It wasn't a traditional kind of celebrity relationship. It was about trying to make a connection.